Hello, it's me, Sam here for Whooper Gaming, and today I'm going to show you how to use and install Bungie Cord. Now, first of all, what on earth is Bungie Cord? Well, Bungie Cord is a basically a uh, sort of platform that allows you to connect multiple servers together. So, for instance, I can have, uh, say, two servers on different hosts or on the same machine, and it, the Bungie Cord will allow my users to be able to teleport and transition between the two servers without having to log in uh, one and then log out and then log into the other one. So it's, it's basically a way of easily allowing your players to transfer from your servers uh, and easily just interact with them. And why is this useful? Well, we can, for a start, host more um, players because we're having more servers instead of just having one big server we can have split onto multiple servers so therefore distributing the load of the player base um, so we can expand our capacity and you know we could have a little mini games on one we could have like a, a plot server or like a creative server on one and a pvp server and we could keep those two entities separate but also allow our players to connect uh, via both of them okay so the way this works it, it has a sort of a uh, a bungee cord server cluster so we have to host this and um, we have to host obviously our servers but then we also have to have our bungee cord server as well so that's what I'm going to be going over today of how to use and install that um, for this tutorial we do have two servers set up uh, we call them server 1 and server 2 um, we are using spigot so that's just, just, why are we using spigot well because spigot and bungee cord work very well together uh, Spigot is basically an optimized bucket server um, but it just works and it auto detects bungee cord and that sort of thing and it just works seamlessly so if you don't know how to use and install Spigot I do have a tutorial for that um, so please look in the description below um, but we set up two servers here server 1 what was server 1 and server 2 because I've spelt them wrong but that doesn't really matter um, and then so that's all set up, but one thing we're going to do is in the server properties. So before we uh, install Bungie Core, we just need to make sure our servers are okay. And there's two things we need to change here. The first thing is the server port. So we're going to set our Bungie Core server, I'm going to say, I'm going to keep saying Bungie Core server just to assume that that's what the players connect to. But we're going to change this server port here to 25566 or anything other than the default 25565. The reason we change that is that when players connect just by default, they knew the, then the, the port number is just assumed to be 25565. And that will be our bungee um, cord sort of thing, the proxy. So we're just going to choose a different port. I'm going to choose 25566 just because that's one more. And we obviously can choose whatever you, you like. Just obviously um, make sure those ports are open um, on your computer or server. So just change that to 25566. And another thing you want to change is the online mode to false. Now you might be wondering here, why are we doing this? Um, first of all, it doesn't work if you set this to true. So it just won't work. Um, obviously this will cause problems. Um, players can just log on as any name and wreak havoc, as it plainly puts. Um, so it's okay, we can set this to false. And the reason we can set this to false is because the bungee cord is basically our, our, our authenticator. It basically is our online mode. So it's okay to do this um, because our bungee cord will just check to make sure the player is actually a legitimate player and not on a crack client. Okay, so that's all fine. We can change everything else to what we like. Server IP doesn't really matter too much. Um, it might matter if you uh, I've got machines on the same server. Um, it's good just to set this as 127.0.0.1, um, but it's not really too necessary. Um, but that's okay. So that's on our server one. And server two is exactly the same. We're also running Spigot, uh, but obviously we're going to need a different port. So I've chosen 25567. That's just been two more. And again, we're going to set the online mode to false. So that's all we have to do uh, to our servers, just those sort of changes, just the port change and the uh, online mode to false. Okay, so now let's actually get to the uh, the bungee cord sort of side of it. So 
we're going to uh, go to spigotmc.org. Um, here you can read all the information about uh, Spigot and Bungie Cord. You want to hit downloads and then Bungie Cord, and it'll give you a uh, a Jenkins uh, way of downloading it. We're just going to download the uh, latest one, which is 1.7.2 at the moment, if it loads. Um, obviously, I've already downloaded that, so um, once that's loaded, uh, my internet's been rather slow today. Um, but okay, while that's loading, we'll just see. So you should get a .jar file. So drag and drop that into a bungee cord folder anywhere you like. I'm going to create a new start.bat, and in the start.bat, we're just going to have Java, and then space hyphen jar, bungeecore.jar, and then pause on the second line. Obviously, you can have uh, that will run bungeecore as default. You know, you can change the uh, max Java virtual machine memory size and the minimum, like you would normally uh, when you're starting a server. So you can add those parameters there. I'm just going to add a pause there just so. Um, it just doesn't close automatically. We can see the log and stuff. So that's that's what I like to do. Just those two things there. Okay. So is that loaded yet? Yeah. So that's all loaded. Just want to hit bungeecore.jar right here, and uh, that will uh, will um, download and just drag and drop it here. So I'm going to remove what I've already put here, except from the start of that and the actual jar. And I've done the opposite. <laughs> Let's just delete that. So now we're going to hit start.bat. And uh, it will start to load. Now, the first time you run this, it will uh, download plugins and modules and all sorts of things. And then it will start listening on a certain port. Um, but that's all fine. It just loads up our configs. And now that's what we're going to be doing. So we're going to hit end. Uh, end is the new stop as a way of closing this uh, server, I guess. And then you can see everything's good. Disabling plugins, thank you and goodbye. And then pressing key to continue. Okay, so the main thing we're going to be interested in today is our config.yml. So we're going to open that up and uh, take a look and see what we have to do. Okay, so first thing we want to do, I'm going to go over all these groups and permissions and whatnot. Uh, in a bit, but let's just focus on the servers to start off with the servers and the listeners. Okay, so first of all, let's just create our two servers. So we've got server one and server two. Uh, down the bottom here, we have servers and then lobby by default, uh, the address of it, and the uh, restricted and the message of the day. So we can kind of copy and paste this onto a new line. And I'm going to rename these servers just to S1. And S2, so for server one and server two. So the address of server one is localhost 25566. Obviously, if you've got an IP or you're using it on a different server other than your local host, you can uh, set that to your IP there. And uh, on this one, we had 25567. Again, change that uh, IP if you're not using um, the default one. Okay, and also you've got this message of the day. This is just what's shown when uh, you know you, you add your server to the list of my multiplayer servers. This is what players see, so they just see just another bungee cord forced host. Let's just change that, just another bungee cord server one. And we'll change this one to server two. And it does support color codes here. So like for instance, the ampersand one will give it a color. Okay, so it's also recommended just to note that you use lowercase names of all the servers. Okay, so that, that sets up our two servers, so that's all good. But now let's set up the, uh, the listener. So we have this listener here. Um, it tells us the max players, the fullback server, and whatnot. So first thing we want to do is change the fullback server. So we're going to change this back to S1. Oops. And then what the fullback server does is basically if a player can't connect to a server or a server is unavailable, um, then it will go to S1, basically. So it should connect to that. And this is the default server as well. 
So this is the default server that someone's connected to. So we're going to also set that to S1. So the default server is S1. If they can't connect to that, then it'll go to the fallback server and so on. So you might want to change that to S2, for instance. It just depends on your setup, um, having the fallback server and the default server and whatnot. OK. Uh, so now we have the max players. Let's just go down the list, I think, the best way. So the max players here uh, is an integer. It's by default 1. And this just shows you the max player limit on the Minecraft uh, player client. Uh, it doesn't actually affect your actual number of players. Um, you can set it to zero and players will still be able to join. Um, but that's just for visual preferences. I uh, already covered fullback server. Now the host, and this is important. So this will be your, your IP and port of which the Bungie Cord instance will be hosted on. So um, you can use 0.0.0 and that will just listen on all IPs. Um, but we're going to set this to 127.0.0.1 um, just because we're hosting it locally and I'm just going to be connecting it locally, so that's fine to do. And we're going to change this here to 25565 as the default uh, Minecraft port. Just so then when players connect to this host here, then Bungie Core sort of takes over and will. Uh, well, deliver them to the default server uh, and whatnot. Okay, so that's that's a very important one there. The host um, is very good. Okay, so now we have bind local addresses. Now, if your um, system doesn't have multiple IP addresses, then it has no purpose. Um, but this is whether or not your Bungie users uh, connect to all your servers will be explicitly set to the address Bungie is listening on. Um, it's not too much of a problem, you don't really have to know too much about that, um, but if you've got multiple IP addresses then it might be a good idea to set this to true, else it doesn't really matter too much. Okay, uh, ping path through. This again is a boolean, true or false, and this is whether or not uh, to pass the ping through when we can reliably get the target server. So we're going to force the uh, default server. Again, that doesn't really matter too much. Uh, tab list. Now there are two uh, types or strings we can put. First is global ping. Uh, and this will show all the players connected to the Bungie proxy, uh, complete with the ping. And we also have global server. Uh, and this will show all the local players on that local server. Um, so if we want to have everyone across the network, we use global ping. If we want just an individual server, like by default, then we can use global uh, server. Also you can have global just on its own, and that serves the same purpose as global ping, just doesn't have that ping, it just shows everyone on the server. Okay, so default server S1, we already covered that, that's the default server that players will connect to. Uh, forced host as well. So this allows for re redirection. So if you have a, uh, a subdomain of domain, so here we have pvp.md-5.net, that's a subdomain of the domain md5-5.net. Um, so if that is joined, it will sort of bypass the default server and go to the server well, stated in the config. Um, so for instance, if we have, uh, say our our domain is md5.net this is our sort of host if they connect to pvp.md5.net then they can get to the pvp but we can also have another one so for instance we can have another um, subdomain s1 md5.net and this will send them to s1 and then we can have another one s2 md5.net and this will send them to s2 so basically, by using um, by using subdomains, we can direct them to a server directly without having to sort of deep go to the default server. So that's quite handy to do. Um, obviously, you would have to set up your subdomains, make them exist, and forward with them to the Bundy Cord address um, as your main domain. But you know, that's quite a handy thing to do. But as we we don't have a domain, that's going to be fine, we're just going to leave that. But just if you wanted to know, that's quite a handy feature. 
Okay, uh, tab size, this is just simply the amount of players that will show you on tab list. So when you press tab, it shows player list and that will show 60 of them. Uh, forced default server. So this again is a uh, boolean true or false. So if it's true, the player will always connect to the, the default server. But if it's false, it will sort of connect them to the last server they connected to. Um, so if they've logged onto the server before and they've changed server to like a PvP server, and then if this is false, then they'll when they come back on, then they'll go to the PvP server. So it's quite handy if you want to keep players in the same world that they left in, um, instead of just going back to the lobby server. But if you again like have some sort of uh, I don't know, mini game server where you have, a, where you have a, a hub and then you have mini servers off that, then it might be a good idea to set this to true just so that every time they log on, they uh, go back to um, the default lobby server. But that we find setting that to false in our instance. Uh, Message of the day, so this just is just I know, a string again with color codes, uh, just shows the displayed me the multiplayer me menu, you know, when you have all those list of things it just says another bungee server or just change this to oopla bungee server just so we can see it when we uh, add it okay uh, query enabled uh, don't have to write too much about this Oops. Uh, this is just true or false and then this is whether to enable the UDP query but again that's probably not uh, very necessary and, and then the query report again is the port UDP query on, but we'll just brush over that. We don't really need to know that too much. Uh, the timeout, so this is how long um, the Bungie server or Bungie called proxy should go unresponsive before shutting off all the connections. So I believe that's in milliseconds, so that's about 30 seconds there. And the connection throttle, again, this is an integer. Uh, the time delay before a client is allowed to connect again after a recent connection attempt to prevent attacks. Okay, and that's also in milliseconds. So I believe this is very important. Um, if you have bungee cord on a different machine to some of the servers, then you have to set this to minus one. Um, I believe, or I believe the connection throttle on each of the bucket dot YMLs on each of the servers has to set to minus one uh, or else it won't work properly. But that's just that. Um, and we also covered the servers. Uh, IP forward, um, what does that do? That is whether or not to enable the IPT, IP forwarding, which allows you to see the true IP of a player rather than proxy IP addresses. Um, but obviously you have to set up correctly, so that we're gonna set that as false. And online mode, that is your sort of, are you gonna be cracked client or not? Um, like we have before, we set our servers to offline mode false, so other players connecting to it uh, don't have to be legitimate, but then now bucket cord is our new authenticator. We can now change the online mode here as well to true or false, whether or not we want to allow just anyone to join uh, or not. So that's a brief overview of the main sort of things. We're gonna quickly go over the permissions and groups. So. By default, there are permissions, there are certain commands um, that we have, so these alert commands, ending commands, IP commands, and reloads commands. Um, Bungie cord will sort of come first before any um, plugin or whatnot. We can actually add plugins to the Bungie cord. Uh, if you see here, there is a plugins directory, so there are plugins which you can add to it, which do handle this sort of thing. Um, but these are the permissions just for default players and for admin players. So by default, everyone has the ability to do server and list, and then admins have these ones. So I'm gonna change my name up here, or MD5, to Samkio. And what this will do here, so it will just put me, the groups, Samkio, and it will assign me as admin. If I wanted another admin, say Torrent, then I can just do that as well. Ooh, if I could spell admin right, that would be helpful. And there we go, at torrent source from admin. So when he logs on, he will have access to these commands. Uh, player limit, so this is your actual player limit, so the global player limit of everyone connected to all your servers. 
Um, so minus one just means unlimited, but you can actually set this to a, a finite number, say 250. Um, so that only 250 people can join your server at some point. Uh, disable commands. So this is just used to disable certain commands from your Bungie Cord instance. Um, so for instance, slash find has been disabled. Just certain commands, if you don't want them to be run at all, then you can just disable them there. Um, okay, and then the stats, you don't have to really do anything with that. Um, so just leave that and just literally just use for the stats purposes um, and whatnot. Okay, so that is a brief overview of the config. Uh, locations, that just stores all the locations, like when we uh, set the, the force, you know, changing thing, that's fine. And modules here, um, well, if you look here in our modules, we have all these uh, alert, find, list, and server, all these commands that we can use. I'll quickly go over some of those maybe uh, in game, um, but that just tells us what modules we're running. So we're going to head and uh, going to start the bat, and there we go. It says listening on one two seven, or one zero zero two five five six five. Open up our Minecraft uh, client, and let's just make that a bit bigger. Hit multiplayer, and here we go. Here, Minecraft server, Whooper Bungie server. So you can see here we set that before zero one, so that's cool. That's just for visual. You can easily change our Whooper Bungie server. Uh, thing and you'll notice here in the config that initial handler has connected so we're going to double click that and it will attempt to log in it will, now it will attempt to connect me to uh, S1 which you won't be able to do um, so then it will go to the fullback server which is also S1 which you can't do so it says could not connect so now let's run our servers so, so server 1 we're going to run that and oops, let's try and get try and get this nice. So we'll try to start server one there, so two there, and our bungee instance can go here. So these both are running spigot, remember? So now let's refresh and now double click that. And oh we're on server one, and I put a little uh, stand on both the servers so we can tell which server we're on. So here we are on server one. Uh, if we look on the config for server one, you can see here Samkyo uh, has connected and whatnot. And now let's just go over a couple of the commands just to uh, just show it works. So the first one is alert. So I'm going to do this in the uh, the uh, Bungie instance. So I'm going to do alert hello. And that will send a message to everyone connected with Bungie alert hello. So, you know, is that that's sort of like the broadcast uh, on individual servers, but you can do that across all servers, which is rather handy. Um, you can also do IP, so I'm gonna do this in game, so IP sound here, and it tells you the IP of the, that individual player. So you can see there, well, it's just localhost because I'm just connected via localhost. It also tells you the port and whatnot. Um, you can also do slash bungee, that will tell you uh, what bungee uh, version you're running there. And you've got also all sorts of things like glist, tells you the players on each uh, server, so S1, the same here, and S2, there's no players. And there's all sorts of commands you can do. Um, there is a list on the, oh, I'll provide a link in the description to the list, but there's a couple there. If we hit tab, we can see everyone connected through the entire network, which unfortunately is just me at the moment. But uh, there you go. And now one command is very useful, is the slash server. So I'm going to do slash server. It tells you what server you're currently connected to, so S1, which is good. And it tells you how many of the servers you can connect to, so we can connect to S1 or S2. So let's switch server by doing S slash server S2, and boom. We can see in the config, uh, Sam here left the game on our server one. We can also see on our config for server two that Sam here just joined. And we can see on our broadcast, uh, our bungee cord instance. Uh, so S2 connected, and then we're disconnecting me from one and connecting me to the other. 
and we can see in game clearly they're on server 2 because we can see the little sign and uh, my inventory has changed and all sorts so there you go so now it's a G list again you can see now I'm on server 2 and uh, that basically concludes today's tutorial um, it's been a very long 25 minute or so tutorial but um, I hope I explained quite uh, in depth the commands, the configurations for Bungie Cord and obviously this is just a two uh, server system but I hope you can understand how you can expand this to uh, multiple servers just by copy and pasting that few lines of code we can add another server and uh, whatnot. Now there are plugins and stuff which we can use uh, so you don't have to do slash server to teleport between servers you can have it as a uh, well, another command or you can have it as a portal um, obviously have a look at the plugins um, I think we've been going on too long to go over any of those but so thanks for watching um, I hope you find this useful um, it's very very handy I mean there are systems um, that cost you know loads of money and this is a very uh, well it's a free system and it works absolutely fantastically um, but um, yeah, so if you've got a large server and you're looking to expand, this might be what you'd like to do. Okay then, uh, thanks for watching. This has been me, Sam here for Gaming, signing out.